What is up, Fusion fam? Uh, let's go ahead and do the selfie stick for, um, for this activity right here. Um, if you need, um, you know, download the parts and then upload them. If you need the parts, uh, throw them down in the comment section and you'll find a link to these two files right here. One being the uh, selfie stick unassembled and then the second one being um, the thumb screw you would need. Um, what I am also going to do is build this in a different way that I haven't seen in any other videos, kind of using Fusion in the way intended rather than trying to think about it in the in the version of you know using it as you would an inventor. So I'm going to go ahead and just close out on this and I'm going to go ahead and start a brand new file and let's just call this selfie stick. That way uh, we've got an un assembled version, uh, disassembled version, and then we have our assembled version. So I'm going to call this selfie stick assembled. And then um, we got selfie stick parts, selfie stick assembled, and the thumb screw. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pull in my parts as from my, my design. Now I'm going to just rotate these parts around just their orientation that I would like it to be in. Doesn't necessarily matter too much. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this some thumb screw in as well. Okay. And then we can kind of put that wherever we want. I think I'm gonna need this orientation here in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that like so. All right. Now, first thing we have to do when we're looking at assemblies is one part should not move. And for me, I'm going to have this uh, this slider right here be the part that doesn't move. That way the shaft can go backwards and then everything else can rotate kind of here as expected as needed to be. So we're gonna do a thing that I, I just don't see used too often but because um, it's kind of a newer feature and that's gonna be as built joint. So we're gonna join this as it is currently in the environment. So what I'm gonna do is click on this piece right here which is our stick top. And then I'm going to fix that, or I'm gonna join that to the origin plane. And that's gonna be a rigid, just because I don't want it to move. So notice this piece is not moving. Looks good, okay. And then if we go ahead and make our origin plane active, you can see that my joint, I do have a joint symbol over here off to the side, uh, just because it was joined to the origin. Anytime you don't want to see something, you can just click on it once, hit V for visible, click away, and it disappears. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit J for joint and do an, a regular joint because this bottom is not assembled in the way I need it to on the stick. So I'm going to click on the top of the circle right here. I'm going to rotate down the bottom. Just in case you don't remember, you know, you use the center of your mouse wheel to pan and then hold down shift plus your center mouse wheel to rotate. So I want this piece to slide. So we're gonna go over here to our joint and make it a slider. And then that looks pretty good. I do want to <clears throat> make sure it slides correctly. So I'm gonna put a minimum maximum value on it. And we can just drag this up or you can type in the value. Depending upon how you do this, you might have to put in positive 12 or negative 12. Um, and then just to make sure that the motion works, we can go and hit play. Oh, we got to set a maximum. That's going to be zero. That way my uh, slider goes all the full, the complete full distance. And then we click OK. And boom, there we go. Now this slides up and down as I expect it to do. I'm going to slide it all the way forward and then I'm going to tell it to capture position because I want this to be my new normal where it slid all the way forward. Next thing we're going to do is J for joint and then I'm going to rotate down, select the center of this face, but I have a hard time doing that. So I'm going to hold down shift or sorry, control and that allows me to hold on to this face and then we can go to the center of that hole right there looks good and then I'm gonna to go to the center of my threads here that way those two parts kind of are aligned as expected a couple things happen well one one is flipped so let's go here and uh, let me open up my dialog box just a little bit more flip that 
and then this is going to be a rigid constraint because it's going to be those threads are going to be locked in there. And then we we'll click OK. Looks good. Just zooming out. Slider still does expected. And then there we go. Let's just keep going, guys. Let's just keep doing it. I'm going to hit J for join again. The next piece I'm going to need is this side piece right here, which is, let me go back to my point, my what is that, shoe bottom. So let's do J for joint. We'll click on our shoe bottom. And then I'm going to find some place for it to line up with. Now, if we look down on here, do we notice how this is slightly off to the side? If you're zoomed out, the steps in which it moves is bigger, but if you zoom in, your steps are smaller. Zoom in just a little bit more. Look at that. We're able to get closer and closer and closer to the value we need. And I think that's, uh, so let's do negative 0.025. That way is equally in between those two gaps right there. I did do a boo-boo. Let's go back here and edit this. Let's do edit this joint. Um, and instead of a rigid, let's make this a revolute. The spin direction is correct, but we do want to set a minimum maximum values. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on minimum maximum, and then I'm going to rotate this up. You could just type in positive 90, negative 90. And I guess technically uh, it might be able to go a little bit further. Nope. Positive 90, negative 90. Looks good. Click OK. Just to check where things are at, let's hit revert position. This thing rotates up and down, looks great. This thing slides back and forth, looks great. And let's continue on. I believe what we need next is this thumb screw needs to attach these two pieces together. So I'm going to hit J for joint, zoom in, find that base of the threads, zoom this around. Oh, we don't have a hole in this side. We got a hole in this side. There it is. Looks good, except for we need to flip that direction. So let's flip it. And then that is going to be a rigid. Because we want those to hold those two pieces together. Looks good to me so far. Anytime we don't like our movement, remember we can always revert position. So this is moved up right now and I click revert position, it'll snap it back forward, which is kind of where I want this to be at right now. You know what, I changed my mind. Let's go ahead and wrap, have that forward and you'll see why in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and then capture that position. All right, let's hit J for join again because we need our little rubber piece right here to sit on top right there. Looks good. That's gonna be a rigid. Looks okay out of me. And then last piece, but surely not least, is going to be this shoe right here. Let's make sure I built this correctly. Something about this feels a little funky. We were good. I don't know what I was thinking. In any case, click OK there and we are ready to do some of our final pieces just to make sure everything works as, and this is kind of a good, uh, I would say, um, a good practice, if you will, as we do more and more of our joints, just testing one piece at a time to make sure it does as expected. Once it does, I go ahead and just tend to make those joints invisible so that way they're not in my way, and when I'm testing joints later on, I know which joint I need to look at. Okay. Let's go ahead and make our origin plane inactive. I'm going to zoom on in. And then let's do J for join again. We want to grab the inside of this hole, so the full depth here. So you can tell that this face I'm grabbing is not the outside edge of the hole, but is actually that inside, the, the uh, full depth of that hole on the inside. That way, I can go to the full depth on that screw. 
Click OK. I want this to be a rigid. Absolutely. Looks good to me. Now, I don't know about you, but the part that we pulled in, there's something funky with it. So let's fix that. I'll set revert position. That way it's pointing upwards. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to edit this joint. So I'm going to right click on it. Oh, I can't because that's right. They're linked parts. So let's let's uh, for break this link. That way I can edit those parts. And let's break this link. And see what kind of problems I run into. I think we'll be okay. I know we have a red review warning, but overall my parts look okay. So we're going to keep going with it. All right. Now that we're here, we go right click edit joint and then what I'm going to do is say the maximum and minimum so let's do that maximum minimum what's the maximum we're allowed to go it looks like 1.1 inches the minimum would be zero so that slide looks good now the rest we want it to have a spring-loaded action. So if this is a phone holder, you know, it spring loads back down. And so what we do is when we turn that rest feature on, it'll spring load back down to zero. So check this out. Rotates, looks good. And wouldn't you know, there you go, folks. We've got our selfie stick assembly finished. Now, if we wanted to, we could allow this to rotate around a center axis, um, but in my opinion, for a selfie stick, you would want all of this body to be rigid, and if you wanted to rotate it, you would do that with your hand, uh, not necessarily with the part, because if it rotates freely, that means when you hold the phone up, it would just droop down. Gravity would take over. But in any case, we have finished our selfie stick assembly using some features we haven't really seen before, uh, that as-built joint, which is totally helpful. We've done edit joint limits, and we even broke a link so we can make it an edit to parts that we've pulled in based on, on other things. Okay, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.